How many came to praise him tonight? Give him glory. We made it. 2019, we made it. Hallelujah. And it's all because of the great I am. How many know that? It's all because of him. Nothing that we've done, not that we deserve it, but God is just that good. Hallelujah. Close to your side Where heaven is real And death is a lie I want to hear voices From angels above Singing as one Singing hallelujah Holy, holy God almighty Great I
as the songwriter often said, searched all over. Yeah. Couldn't find nobody. Yeah. Nobody greater. Yeah. Well, Happy New Year to all of y'all. Yeah. At this time, if it's not an inconvenience, we would like to welcome all the visitors and have you stand just for a short period. On behalf of Pastor Smith, First Lady, and the congregation, we welcome you. Not only that you've chosen to worship with us tonight, but you chose to worship with us the last night of 2019. And the greatest gift about that is, we worshiping with the one that has kept us all year long. So without further ado, Mount Olive, let's do what we do like no other church in the world. Give them that strong love from no place than right here at the Olive. that 
had today will be the best day of my life. I believe that today will be the best day of my life. I believe that today. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're working in this place, and I worship you, I worship you. Go work a promise keep 
life. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, and you're touching. I worship you, God. Whoa, you are here, and you're healing. I worship you, God. Whoa, you are here. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. You are here. Turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you, God. Now, I want to take some time and call you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. My God, that is who you are. Sing, that is who you are. 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 Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Every prayer that I prayed that you answered, I say. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Yeah. Waymaker. Miracle worker, way maker, 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 miracle worker. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working.
evening. Good evening. Good evening. If you look in the back of the pew in front of you or behind you, there are small sheets of white blank paper. As you listen to the song that the choir is about to sing, uh, the message that God has given Pastor Smith, as you reflect on 2019 and prepare for 2020, we invite you to write down any fears that you have. And after the message, we're going to participate in drowning our fears. Amen. Amen. So again, as you listen to the song, the sermon, reflect on 2019 and prepare for 2020. Write your fears down on those sheets of paper. Amen. And after the message, we are going to participate in drowning our fears. Let's welcome our music ministry back with the sermonic selection. Amen.
didn't have to see that to be reminded that there was so much that happened around us in 2019. Those things happened around us. But what you did not see on that screen was what happened in your house. You and I experienced much in 2019, but we are still here. General Douglas MacArthur was known to occasionally quote Napoleon Bonaparte. One such quote he would often use was the one that Napoleon stated February the 17th, 1814. He said, the bullet that will kill me has yet to be cast. On an amphibious assault on a small island, General Douglas MacArthur, with his corn pipe in hand, chin slightly tilted, hat on his head, shoulders square, stood in absolute courageous bravery and you name it. He stood there in the midst of bombs and bullets going off all around him. In fact, the reporter who was with him, who would track him, who would write his autobiography, he encouraged him to take a picture of it all. The reporter tried to, but at that instance, bombs burst and the reporter went down, as well as the other soldiers who, whose responsibility was to protect General MacArthur. At the end of that explosion, General Douglas MacArthur would be the only one still standing. Douglas MacArthur believed that he could not die until God said it was time. How many of you believe that? That you cannot die until God says it is time. We believe that we are here tonight not because of luck. But we are here because of divine protection. We're not here because we are the recipients of good karma. And that some of the good that we've done throughout the year has returned in our favor. As Christians, we don't believe in karma. We believe in Christ. When you juxtapose Psalm 121 with both the life of Douglas MacArthur and your life, you reach the conclusion that you have been kept alive by God. And God will keep us alive until he is finished with our lives. I believe that. Scripture, the word of God, is replete with words from individuals who believe that their lives were safe in the hand of God. They believe that as long as they were down here, they were in his hands. And they were safe in his hands until they would actually go to heaven to be with him in his bosom. Any number of scriptures remind us that you and I can get on with the business of living for God 
knowing that it is God's business to take care of all of those who live for him. How many scriptures have we heard? No weapon formed against me will prosper. If God be for us, who can be against us? The battle is not ours, it is the Lord. For it is in him that we live, move, and have our being. We believe that we have been kept alive by God until God is finished with our lives. That seems to be the declaration of Psalm 121. As the people of God would make their annual pilgrimage to and fro the, from the holy city of Jerusalem, they would encounter all type of circumstances, situations, dangers seen and unseen. But once they would make it to the holy city, they knew that the only reason why they would make their journey successfully was because of God's protection. And it is here tonight where we come to this sacred place recognizing again that we have not been lucky that's why we're alive. We don't believe in karma. That's not why we're alive. But in spite of all the things that have happened around us and the things that have even happened to us, we are still alive. And I don't know about you, but I know that the only reason why I am alive tonight is because God is not finished with my life. The only reason why you are alive tonight is because God is not finished with your life. Psalm 121, it, it bears this out in terms of how God keeps his people. How God watches over his people. It's mentioned any number of times, at least six times, where it talks about how God will keep you. How God will watch over you. How God will protect your going out and your coming in from everlasting to everlasting. And it is here as we think about in a few hours, 2020 will be here. And there is no need for us to be on pins and needles as we approach 2020 because God is already in 2020. And if God has sustained and kept our lives this far, surely he is able to keep us alive until he is finished with our lives. This psalm has been misconstrued by so many. Many have said that their help comes from the hills. But in actuality, our help comes from the hill maker. It is God who has created the heavens and the earth. And again, these people would be, they were on a journey. They were on their way to the holy city. And they would pass through um, um, heathen communities. They would pass through anti-God communities. And the only reason why they would make it safe and sound was because they were being kept by God. And we have at least three things in common with the people who would raise this psalm as a song. In 2019, the only reason why you and I are still here is because God saved us. But not only will I identify ways and means that God saved us. Secondly, God sustained us. But not only did God save and sustain us, he also shielded us. Listen to what the psalmist says. 
He says, yes, I lift mine eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made, Psalm 121, line 2, who made heaven and earth. And now he gives us this example, this truth, how God, throughout this year, has saved us over and over and over again. Listen to what he says. He, meaning God, will not let your foot be moved. Now, these people, they, they were not as we are. They did not have nice, fine automobiles, but they, they walked. And oftentimes, they would have to traverse high terrain. And these terrains sometimes had rocky places. And they could easily slip. They could lose their footing. And it is not, it does not imply that they did not slip. It implies, however, that they did not fall. This year you and I slipped, but the reason why we didn't fall was because God was holding on to us. That's the picture here. Of these pilgrims, they are on the move. They are, they are going to the holy city of Jerusalem to observe the Passover and one feast after another. But along the way, several things could happen to them. But the only reason why they did not come face with total destruction was because God was holding them up. Some years ago, I came across this story of these researchers who were riveted by a family of eagles. In fact, they were so fascinated that they gave the eagles name. The male, the father, they called him Sandos. The mother, they called her Her Majesty. These eagles made it for life. They had wingspans of about seven feet. And they also had one male eaglet. And on the 67th day of this eaglet's life, something spectacular happened. He was dangling on a cliff. And with wings that had never been flapped, he was staring down a boulder that was about 100 yards down and to the left. And he fell down from that position of hanging, dangling on the cliff. And he started to flap wings that had never been flapped before. Right. And as he began to flap those wings, everything that could go wrong went wrong. He could not set the air foil beneath his wings that would stabilize him, nor was his, uh, fail, his tail feathers working. And just when it seemed like the ground would be his landing place, just when it seemed like he would crash and burn, just when everything that he was trying to do would not work, his father Sandals and his mother, her majesty, came out of nowhere. And they flew beside him. And with their wings and their tail feathers, they stabilized him. And they gave him so much wind and air that he was able to safely land on the boulder. And here is what the psalmist is saying to us without us, willing it, without us really realizing it. That during this year, there were times when what we tried to work didn't work. But aren't you glad that whereas we didn't see God, God never took his eyes off of us. And just when we were on our way down, just when it seemed like we would crash and burn, just when we had come to an end of our skills, our strength, our money, God, our Father, swooped down and he picked us up and we're on a solid rock tonight. It was because God saved us. If we would be honest with ourselves tonight, some stuff we thought would work didn't work. 
Some of the strategies that we came up with did not work. But aren't you glad that before you fell flat on your face, that's what grace does. Grace comes out of nowhere. You don't deserve it, but grace comes out of nowhere. Just when you don't know what to do, grace comes along and grace scoops you up. That's the grace of God. It has nothing to do with our goodness. It has nothing to do with our smarts. It has nothing to do with our skills or know-how. God is good to us because God is just good. But he has saved us. God saved us this year. I mean, just think about it. I hope you don't think you all that. That, that you made it because you are all of that. Oh no, it was the grace of God. But then he says, we have this God. He has this God, listen. You have a God that would never nod out on you. Have you ever nodded at the wheel? And you almost broke your neck. But aren't you glad God never takes a cat now? You'll never catch him nodding at the wheel. He said, he who keeps Israel does not slumber, nor does he sleep. God never takes his eyes off of his people. Well, the reason why we're here tonight is about God saved. But then not only did he save us, he goes on here and he says, God also, he sustained you. He says, the Lord is your keeper. It's a military term. It, 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 it means to be kept in a line. And God has a perfect will. And he has a permissive will. But when God has made plans for your life, you can't get out of his perfect will in that he will allow certain things to happen, but nothing will change his perfect will. So even when you and I go the long way to reach our destination, we're still being kept by God. But here's how God sustains us. He sustains us in two ways, and these are hazardous. These are hazards. He says, number one, the Lord is your shade on your right hand. These pilgrims, when they would be on their journey, they, they knew nothing of climate control. We are living in a day and time where much discussion is about climate control. And as they would make their way to the holy city, they had to go through barren places, desert places. And as they would travel, there were always skilled travelers who knew that once the heat, the sun reached its maximum, they would have to find some shady place, uh, some place where they could retire just for a moment in order to deal with the elements. And they knew that if they could find just a little shade, it could decrease the temperature at least by 30 degrees. And they knew that if they were in the heat too long, they could suffer what is called heat strokes. Now what David is saying here is that we do not have a God who takes the heat out of the sun. We do not have a God who will not keep you out of hot situation, but we have a God who will keep you in hot situation. He is saying 
that we have a God when you belong to him, he allows you to go through the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't give you an air condition in the fire. He doesn't give you a fan in the fire. But what God is able to do, God is able to keep you cool in hot places. Because sometimes the only way you and I are going to grow from one level to the next is because God has to let us go through something that we did not volunteer to go through. And Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego would tell you that they refused to bow down to idols and they were thrown in a hot fiery furnace. Now God didn't take the heat out of the flames, but God kept them in the fire. And we serve a type of God who, who, who says, listen, I want to give you a testimony so that when people see you, you can say the only reason why you see me is because I've been kept, kept. Let me tell you what it means to be kept, kept. To be kept kept means that God lets you go in it and he keeps you while you're in it. You missed it. He, he lets you go in it and he keeps you in it. But he keeps you while you're in it. Oh my God. What I'm saying is the only reason why you came out alive is because God kept you in the midst of it all. He kept you in the fire. He did not let the fire consume you. It's what Isaiah said, I'll let you go through the fire, but the fire will not burn. They had heat strokes. I, 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 I want you to know that if you face anything this year that had the propensity to take you out, but it didn't, it wasn't because of your faith. It wasn't because of your faithfulness. It wasn't because of your righteousness. But let me tell you something. There are times when you are forced in a corner so that God can show you another level of his glory. So when you come out of it, all you can say it was nobody but God. That's, they made it through those desert places. They made it through it. And they would look for shade. Think about how you and I, this year, God every now and then pulled us over, gave us a little shade. Didn't take us out of the situation, but he gave us a little shade. But then not only, it was one hazard, it was heat stroke. Thanks be unto God that you were not consumed during the journey this year. Now he moves from heat stroke to moon stroke. Do you see that? Look at your Bible so you can see it. It says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. He says the sun will not strike you by day. And now he says nor the moon. Nor the moon by night. The moon. Lunar. That's where we get our word lunatic. It's, it, it means that you, you get them crazy people checked. We used to say that when we were growing up. It, 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 is, it is to be crazy. And you see, as they traveled, they could be in darkness for so long that their mind would start playing tricks on them that they would start to hallucinate. 
that they would start to imagine the worst things. And yet, the writer here says is that God did not allow them to go crazy in the dark. How many of you went through something this year that lasted for a long time? How many of you start talking to yourself while you were in it? How many of you start looking like what you were going through and then you had to catch yourself? How many of you had to fake it until you could make it? How many of you know that you weren't giving your best but you was giving the best that you had? How many of you were just going through the motion? You, 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 you knew it was not your best, but that was the best that you could offer. How many of you felt like God was blessing everybody else? How many of you felt like God was skipping over you and blessing somebody else? How many of you felt like God had allowed you to stay in places of darkness where all of your hope was gone? There was no light at the end of the turn of the, of the tunnel. But look at you today. The only reason why you didn't lose your mind was because God kept your mind. Let me say this. You know, some people say, you know, if it wasn't for God, I would have lost my mind. Let me say something to you. You can be in something and lose your mind, but the only reason why you come out on the other side is because God was keeping you. Listen, I had some situations in 2019 where it's blank to me. I can't, I can't put my hand on it exactly how it happened or what happened because it was so dark so long that I started to lose my way. I started to lose my commitment. I started to second guess God and to question God. I thought God was through with me. I thought God had demoted me. But oh, on the other side, God was reminding you. I'm just letting you know that when I hire you, can't nobody fire you. You can't even fire yourself. I've got you. And no matter how dark it gets, no matter how long the darkness lasts, I got you and I'll keep you. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? When you felt like you're losing your mind, you're not as sharp as you want to be. But he didn't give up on you. People didn't even know that you was about to lose your mind. Said, I can keep you when it get hot. I can keep you even when it get dark. It's the only reason why we're here today. But God has kept us alive. Because he's not finished with our lives. He saved us when what we thought was going to work didn't work. And he swooped down, saved us, picked us up, put us on a solid, sure foundation. He saved us. But then he, again, he sustained us. Listen, quit listening to people who say, since you say you're not supposed to go through anything. That's not Bible. Let me tell you what's Bible. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. The Lord will allow you to suffer. The Lord will allow the bottom in your life to fall out. The Lord will allow you to be forsaken by your dogs your best friends. God will allow you to be alone so y'all can get some alone time. God will allow that to happen. But he sustains us. But then lastly, we're here today, not just because he saved us. Thank God for that. He saved us. He sustained us. He kept us in situations 
that we were kicking and screaming to get out of. You know, it's his, it's his fire. It's his fire. Don't worry, he has his hands on the thermostat. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's got his eye on you and his hand on the thermostat. He'll sustain you. With the same God, he shields us. Policemen in New York City, it's October 1993. They had seen situations like this, but not one just like this. They saw a parked car, and within that parked car was a man with a weapon. The weapon was drawn. They alerted the SWAT team. Sharpshooters were prepared. When sharpshooters were in place, they attempted to negotiate with the man to lay down the weapon to come out of the car, but with no success. They went on and on and on. Absolute silence. Nothing was accomplished. After further observation, they discovered that the man in the car with the drawn weapon wasn't a man, it was actually a mannequin. They located the owner of the automobile and he confessed that with all of the carjackings that was taking place in the city, he felt that he would feel much safer if he always had somebody in the car with him who would protect him. Well, aren't you glad you don't need a dummy in a car with you, that you've got a God, a God who never leaves you, a God who never forsakes you, a God who is with you 24-7? That's what the psalmist says here that you and I have a God who shields us. Listen to what he says. Look at verse number seven. He says, the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever more. Here the psalmist is saying that there were situations that they were not aware of. But because of the all-seeing God, yeah. because of the everywhereness of God, yeah. Yeah. God was always protecting them uh -huh. from what he could see, not from what they could see. And I like that because there are so many situations and circumstances that you and I experienced this year without us knowing that they were situations and circumstances. You know, I, I was just thinking this morning, I was counting, I typically eat three meals a day. And in 365 days time three, that's almost 1,100 meals. And do you know I did not get choked by not one of those meals? I was not food poisoned severely by one of those meals. Do you not know that I cannot count the number of times that I went in and out of my house and yet the Lord protected me? Can I count the number of times where I have come to this church when the sun is still asleep? Can't count the times that I've left this church when the sun has gone down and God has washed me as I go out and as I come in. Have I got a witness? Anybody else in here that you know God has kept you? He's blessed the food that you had to eat. He put you to sleep, washed over you, and woke you up the next day. It's God keeping us. It's God blessing us. It's God shielding us from so much that is beyond our finding out. All the meals. How many times have we been speeding? Tell the truth, Judge Clark is here tonight. Look how many times. Have we been in our automobiles? 
How many times have we had accidents? Didn't say we didn't get a few scratches, but we are still here tonight. How many surgeries anybody in the room had this year? And you are still here tonight. God is able to bless us as we go out and as we come in. From this time forth and forevermore. Maybe you've heard a name, maybe you haven't. But let me introduce you to Miss Bertha Smith. Who was Bertha Smith? She was known as Miss Bertha. She was born in 1888. Died 1988. Lived to be right at 100 years old. She was a preacher. She was a missus missionary. She grew up in, I think it's uh, Cape and South Carolina. And, and in her lifetime, she endured much. She knew sickness. She knew disease. She had a life threatened any number of times. She lost many of her family members and she was all by herself. And, and they did a story on her. They wrote a story on her about her life's journey. It was, it was published by Broadman Press. And, and they asked her, they asked her, how did she endure sickness? They asked her, how, how could she handle when a life was being threatened? Uh, how, how, how could she uh, seemingly have to endure all of these situations by herself? Her parents had died, and again, many of her siblings had died. And, and, and how, how is it that she was still able to do the very thing that she believed God had called her to do? And, and they were waiting for her to say some long, drawn-out word. They were waiting for her to pull out a sheet of paper and she spelled it out in one word that said, Miss Bertha, how is it that you made it? How is it that you had to endure heartbreak? How is it that you had to endure being all by yourself? How is it that you had to endure having your life threatened? And she said one word. They were waiting on her to say something long and drawn out like you're waiting on me to tell you what was the one word. And Miss Bertha looked up and she said, God. And I got a witness. She said, God. It was God who protected me from my enemies. It was God who sustained me. It was God who healed me when I was sick. She said it was nobody but the Lord. Have I got a witness? And is there anybody in the room tonight? Your testimony is it was nobody but the Lord. Have I got a witness? Who was it? that put food on your table. It was God. Who was it that made a way out of no way? It was God. Who was it that protected you from your enemies? It was God. Have I got a witness? Who was it when you were depressed who lifted your bow down head? It was nobody but God. Have I got a witness? It was nobody, nobody, nobody but the Lord. So if you want to hear my testimony, how did I make it? It was God. Have I got a witness? How did you make it? Somebody will say it was God. In fact, without God, we could do nothing. Without God, we would surely fail. Without God, our life would be so rugged. It would be just like a ship without a sail. But if you flip the script, with God, all things are possible. Have I got a witness? I say with God, we are more than conquerors. Have I got a witness? With God, 
we can go through the storms and come out on the other side with God. We don't look like what we've been through. With God, we can shout victory, victory, victory is mine. Have I got a witness? But on my way to my seat, is there anybody here tonight you want to testify? You want to say it was nobody but the Lord. It was nobody but the Lord. It was nobody but the Lord. Have I got a witness? And I thank God that the same God who was with us this year, he's waiting on us next year. Have I got a witness? Same God made a way, will make a way in 220. Same God who opened doors in 19, will open doors in 2020. Same God who blessed us this year, he'll bless us, he'll bless us next year. So why don't you go ahead and give him a praise in advance. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Shout now. Tell him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the battles you're going to fight. Thank you for the healings you're going to perform. Thank you for the miracles that you will perform. Thank you for eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man what things God has prepared for those who love him. Is there anybody here tonight you can say I love him because he first loved me? Well, how do you know he loved you? Because one Friday when I was on my way to hell, Jesus came down, went to a place called Calvary, and there he died, but he didn't stay dead. He died on a Friday, stayed dead on a Saturday, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all dunamis, all power in his hand. Aren't you glad that he has all power? Have I got a witness? Can I testify about that power? He has sin killing power. He has demon destroying power. He has healing power. All devils in hell can't pluck you out. Thank God for his power. Why don't you say thank you for what you've done? Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you're going to do. Our God is an awesome God. He carried us when we could not walk on our own. He lifted us when we could not lift our heads. He kept us even when times we didn't want to be killed. When the trials were too heavy. When they were lasting too long. He kept us. Everything you and I went through. He brought us through it. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? He brought us through it. And sometimes kicking and sometimes kicking and screaming, sometimes complaining. But he knew 
we had a destiny and a destination. And we couldn't even stop ourselves from him fulfilling the plans that he had for our lives. It was nobody but the Lord who was pulling us through. Come on, let's sing that a little bit. Come on. Anybody know there was a Lord who was pulling us? Come on, choir. Just reflect. Just think about your experiences. Sickness. Examinations. Court cases. You know what you've been through. And the Lord kept you. Brought you through it. It was the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. Think about what he took you through. Just you and the Lord. this year anybody felt like felt like quitting anybody left you Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. Come on, let's celebrate God. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's thank Him. Let's celebrate Him, what He's done for us. Come on, you know what He did for you. Come on, you know how many ways He made. You know all about Him. Let's give Him thanks. We're going to do this so many fears, so many anxieties, issues, challenges, things have overwhelmed us. They have they've clouded our vision of God. Sometimes we don't even think God is big enough to handle it. But tonight we are going to drown our fears. We have several members of the church. They're going to come to you. And I want you to take this, the fear that you've written down, the anxiety, what have you, that you've written down on the paper. I want you to ball it up. And we want you to pass it to the inside. And they're going to come and collect it. And then we're going to show you how we're going to drown our fears. Just give us two minutes. Just two minutes. You can take your seats. Take your seats. If you've written anything on that sheet of paper, I want you to ball it up, close it up. We're coming with containers. Just pass it down. 
the Bible says, God says to us, cast all your what? Cast all, why? For he what? Cares. God wants us to give him what's bothering us, what's overwhelming us, what's frustrating us, what's draining us, what we're afraid of. Whatever it is, all your concerns, major concerns, just, just write it on the paper. And we believe God is able, we know he is able, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is within us. God the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Just pass them down. Just pass them down. Even if you're here tonight and for whatever reason you you do have worries, you do have cares, you have concerns, you have anxieties, but chose not to write them down I still want you to in some way participate I go through the motion of actually casting the care extending your arm towards those who have the containers with those who have written down their anxieties we're going to give them to God Come your way, hold your hand, hold your hand up. Just hold your hand up so we'll know which way to come. God has all power. Make some noise. We believe, we believe that because of Christ we are more than conquerors. It is not our strength, it is not our power, it is not our might. But it is that power that lives inside of us.
because of Christ we can do all things who is our strength. Would you lift your hands to God. Father, we thank you for 2019. We thank you for seen and unseen dangers, how you brought us through. We thank you for what you allowed us to see you do. But we also thank you for what you did and we have no idea. But we're just thankful that you have, you had a plan for 2019 and nothing could stop the plan that you had for our life for this year. As we move forward, the beginning of a new era, we have no idea what will happen, who will be here. But God, we know you know all things. We believe that while we are here, we are in your hands. And if we should leave your hands, it will be called, it will be because we are in your arms in heaven. So we trust your hands. Our lives are in your hand. So we trust you to do what only you can do. Now bless your people as they go out and as they come in. Keep us all safe from those things that are not like you. Thank you for our time together. We thank you for everything you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And all who believe, say amen. amen. Tell somebody Happy New Year so you'll be the first one to tell them Happy New Year.